NFL Week 1 is less than a week away. Insane to think. This time next week, we'll be reacting to every single game that happened on Sunday. Insane. Overreactions coming. I can't wait for that. Week 1 is always a lot of fun. Especially now. A lot of people will be watching a lot of overreactions to happen. But between now and then, what questions do we have? What do we not know what's going to happen this year that I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what's happening? Five questions with my answers, at least, that I think it's going to happen coming out of this NFL season. No particular order, no particular tier, but just five questions that I came up with that to me are the big, five biggest questions that are heading to this year. Number one, can Cam Newton stay healthy? Honestly, if you listen to this show back when Cam Newton signed his deal with New England, I was very bullish on the fact that Cam Newton wouldn't even be the starter. I even questioned whether he'd be on the roster. Obviously, that prediction, a little wrong. Just, just a tiny bit wrong. A little off on that one. Cam Newton named the starter. Cam Newton a captain for the Patriots. Missed that one. But what, what I, part of the reason why I didn't believe Cam Newton would win the starting job was because I didn't, one, buy he was completely healthy. And two, I didn't think he could stay healthy. And that's, that's where my first question lies. Can he actually stay healthy? He's gotten through training camp. Now, I'm assuming he hasn't taken one hit at all in training camp. So staying healthy, I'm sure, is easy. Can he actually stay healthy when, he, when he's on the field taking hits in week one? Because guess what? The Patriots' success is largely predicated on Cam Newton's health. He can still play. He's an MVP. He's shown when he's played, when he's healthy, he can still have it. Two years ago in 2018, before he got hurt, he was actually pretty good. The Panthers were 6-2. and two. He was flashing. He played well. Hurts his shoulder. Panthers lose every game the rest of the year. Plays two games last year. Misses the last 14, mind you. He missed a full season worth of games the last two years combined. So, yeah, I'm skeptical that he can still stay healthy. He's proven me wrong already. He's won the starter's job. He's on the team. So I'm 0-for-1 in that prediction. But I am seriously, seriously concerned, and I don't think he's going to stay healthy. I really don't. Can he stay healthy? I say no. But that's what I'm really interested to watch here is if he stays healthy, the Patriots will be pretty good. They could win the division. But I don't buy that he's going to stay healthy. I really don't. I think he's due for an injury, especially with the way it sounds like the Patriots are going to try to use Cam Newton. This is a one-year deal, mind you. This is not a franchise quarterback that they're trying to ease back in to have under center for five, seven, ten years. This is a one-year prove-it deal. They're going to let the reins loose because guess what? If they run Cam Newton to the ground this year, if they have success, they run Cam Newton ten times a game, let's say. He's rolling with his legs. He's, he's playing like the old Cam Newton that we're used to seeing. Guess what? He's going to get run to the ground, and if he gets hurt, really no skin off the Patriots' back. They move on. They find a different quarterback. It's a one-year commitment. So you, got to, you, better, you better think Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels are going to get the most out of Cam Newton in this one year. They're not going to be cautious. They're not going to ease the reins back or try to keep him healthy. They're going to try to win. Can they stay healthy? I say no. I have my doubts. But that's my number one question. Can Cam Newton stay healthy? If so, the Patriots, well, Patriots, no, 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 no. The Patriots will have success if he stays healthy. I'm not buying he can stay healthy. Number two, a ton of third-year quarterbacks with question marks. Who will be the man to step up? Because all three have different levels of expectations, but all three second-year quarterbacks, their team needs to step up. Josh Allen entering his third year. The Bills have a great, great, great roster. The Bills have one of the best rosters in all of football. You look at their defense, talent at all three levels. They added Stephon Diggs to their wide receiver room to make him their number one wide receiver. I really like the Bills team as a whole. My biggest concern, my biggest worry about claiming or, or um, predicting them to be AFC East champions is Josh Allen. It truly is. I'm sorry. The way he reads the field sometimes, his accuracy, it's gotten better, but still a significant question mark. His decision-making scares me. And he has yet to prove so far that he can be the man to lead a team. In the playoffs, he played well for the first half. Once Deshaun Watson took over the game, Josh Allen had no answer. That Bills offense went dead. Can he be the reason the Bills have success this year? I think the Bills will win the division. Again, more to that Thursday. But I don't think it's going to be because of Josh Allen. 
I think he'll be improved. I think he'll be a marginal quarterback. But I think there will be some serious question marks of jo can Josh Allen lead this team to a Super Bowl because every other piece right now there for the Bills is there. So can Josh Allen, as a third-year quarterback, step up? I have my question marks. Baker Mayfield, another third-year quarterback, the number one overall pick two years ago, heading to year number three. Had a great rookie year, burst on the scene. You know, he filled in for Tower Tail when he got hurt in that Thursday night game against the Jets. Had a great second half of the season in his rookie year. Regressed greatly last year in year two. Expectations were sky high. They trade for Odell Beckham Jr. They, have a, a, they pair him with Jarvis Lange. They have Nick Chubb. They have David Njoku. Skill position-wise, the talent was there. They signed Kareem Hunt. The expectations surely were there. There were some Super Bowl predictions. There were some Super Bowl predictions for the Cleveland Browns last year. The hype was real. People were buying into Baker Mayfield, and he just laid an egg. He fell flat in his face last year in year two. Now, I think a lot of that has to do with Freddie Kitchens. So I am honestly, I believe, of the three quarterbacks, I'll get into Sam Darnold here in a second, I believe Baker Mayfield's going to have the biggest jump of the third-year quarterbacks because Lamar Jackson, as we know, there's no real questions about him. He's the MVP. I'm leaving, out of this, uh, leaving him out of this discussion. And Josh Rose just got cut by the third team in three years. Or excuse me, looking for his third team in three years. So he's out, Lamar Jackson out. It comes to these three quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold. I really do think Baker Mayfield's going to have a better year this year, like a lot better year this year. Better than his rookie year. I'm buying into what the Browns are doing. I like Kevin Stefanski as the head coach. I like what they're doing offensively. They address the offensive line because last year the offensive line was putrid. I'm buying to Baker Mayfield. I'm buying to the Browns this year as a playoff team. So I think Baker Mayfield, out of those three quarterbacks, will be the one to step up. But Sam, uh, Sam Darnold, the question for him is not can he be the man. Can he just honestly survive this season? That's honestly the bar I have set for Sam Darnold. I feel so bad for Sam Darnold. I also feel bad for Jets fans. Because now, usually now in the NFL with the way things are going, the third year is always the kind of the year you look forward to. to say, okay, can this guy take a jump? Can he really show that he is a leader of a team? And that's usually after year three is when players get that massive contract extension, i.e., look at Sean Watson, just what he got. Look at Pat, uh, Patrick Holmes, third year, look what he got. Third year is where you kind of decide, yes or no, this is our guy. The Bears and Mitchell Trubisky, after year three, said he's not our guy. No fifth year option for him. We're going to move on. He'll start this year, but we're going to look elsewhere for our long term option. Sam Donald will not get that chance this year. There is nothing I don't think that you could take away from this season that will show truly what Sam Donald can have. The receiving core needed help. They addressed it, but barely. Brashad Perryman, being your big time free agent acquisition wide receiver, Denzel Mims, I thought. I'm not a, I like Denzel Mims. He's okay. I thought there's a lot better receivers you could have got. The offensive line is a patchwork between a lot of backups that are now going to be starters. Le'Veon Bell, the coach, you have Adam Gase hates Le'Veon Bell. A real weapon at running back that you have the coach hate. I don't know what the hell to expect from Sam Darnold this year. When he was healthy, he looked good. He finished the year strong last year when he came back from mono and was healthy. But the offensive line is significantly has question marks, and I'm concerned about if they can protect Sam Darnold. The wide receiving core is not great. I'm sorry. Tight ends, Chris Hernan is, is good when he's healthy. Can he stay healthy? He hasn't proven it yet. I feel really bad for Sam Darnold because, to me, if Adam Gase, a coach on the hot seat, or if he has another bad season, I think the Jets will be bad this year. He could be on the outs. And then you're going to be going into another year with a new head coach, a new system learning, going to your fourth year, where you got to decide, if you're Joe Douglas, is Sam Darnold going to be the guy moving forward? I still have a lot of hype. I still really like Sam Darnold. I think he has a lot of potential. I think the Jets have done everything possible to lessen that potential year after year. So my big question for Sam Darnold, can he just survive? Get through the year, play 14, 15, 16 games, have any modicum of success, because I really think the Jets have done everything possible to not have Sam Darnold have success. And can he just survive? So which third-year quarterback will step up to the, be the man? To me, Baker Mayfield is going to be the one. Baker Mayfield and the Browns, I am buying into, again this year, you know say, fool me twice, shame on me. I bought into the Browns last year as a playoff team. They fell flat on their face at 6-10. and 10. I'm buying to the Browns again as a playoff team this year, this time because Baker Mayfield will be the reason why. Question number three. I think this is a really interesting one. I think there's a lot of different answers. 
Who is the team to beat in the NFC? I think we all know in the AFC the teams beat the Chiefs. Right behind them is the Ravens. Those two are the class of the AFC. The NFC is deep, man. I think there's a legitimate argument you can make for the Cowboys, the Saints, the Buccaneers, the 49ers, and the Seahawks. If you want to throw the Vikings in there after this latest trade for Ngakwe, I, I can hear you. I, I like the Vikings roster, especially their defense. I have questions about their offense, especially with Kirk Cousins. But I'll listen out to you. I'll listen to you if you want to put the Vikings in. I'm not ready to do it, but five teams, I think, legitimately have an argument to say, we are the team to beat the NFC. The NFC goes through us. Who is that team in my mind? Who's the team to beat the NFC? I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks. MVP caliber quarterback and Russell Wilson, which I think this could be really the year Russ gets that award finally. Finally, get, at least gets a vote. How about that? Can we get Russell Wilson one MVP vote, please? Pete Carroll, can we please throw the ball first and not run the ball? Man, think about how good Russell Wilson would be if he had an offensive mind head coach. Or even just Pete Carroll let him, let him control the offense. Not run the ball in first and second down. Wait till the team's down 20 nothing to realize, I know, maybe we should start throwing the ball more often. But I like the weapons that Seattle has. DK Metcalf. Better first year than I honestly expected. Tyler Lockett's solid. Those two get another year in the system. Offensive line is improving. They add Jamal Adams to the defense. I think to me, Seattle, after coming close last year, after coming within inches of winning the NFC North, uh, winning the NFC West and getting that number one team over the, the 49ers, I think to me, the Seahawks in 2020 are the year are the team, are the team to be in the NFC. Number four, this is just a, a general serious question that honestly I really don't have an answer to, but I'm more just throwing it out there to ask and see because this is going to be one of the biggest storylines, if not the biggest storyline in all the NFL. What will be the threshold for canceling games be this year? Right, what is the number? What is the criteria the NFL has to say, you know what, we can't play this game this week? This team can't play. Pack it up. We'll try again next week. We'll try again in two weeks, but can't do it. Can't risk it. Too dangerous, either because there's not enough players or because there's not e exact um, clarity on who is sick and who is not. Major League Baseball did not have a precedent. They did not have a number. They did not have a threshold. So guess what? It changed weekly. The Marlins had four positives one day. They played the game. An outburst happened on the team. All of a sudden, next thing you know, one positive on the team shuts down a team. Mets had two players. Reds had, I believe, one or two players. They get shut down. The threshold changes by the day for a Major League Baseball. We don't know what the NFL is. They didn't outline any or didn't give any outlines or protocols to say, this is what we're looking at. If we get this number, X number, we're not going to play. The Big 12 put out protocols. You have to have a certain amount of players healthy. You have to have a certain overall players at each position healthy in order to play that game. And if a game does get postponed, will they try to reschedule? Is it a forfeit? We don't know. The NFL did not really schedule much time to reschedule games. Right? The culture what we see, there are certain bye weeks, there are certain flexible weeks where you can move back games in order to preserve them, in order to not cancel them. The NFL rolled out the schedule as normal. There's no built-in bye weeks for everybody to where, you know what, if you have a cancellation in week two, we'll replay again in week 13. There's, no, there's nothing like that. So I'm interested to see what happens. Does the team lose out in the playoffs because they had... Didn't have enough players healthy. They had to forfeit a game early in the year. We already saw the issues of false positives, right, that shut down teams that weren't actually sick. I'm just interested to see what is the NFL going to do when it comes to players and teams getting sick.